In this video, I will be discussing the types of diagnostic testing and treatment options for atrial fibrillation. In order for your doctor to diagnose you with atrial fibrillation, it must be captured on a 12-lead electrocardiogram, or ECG. In addition to the ECG, you will have blood tests taken, such as a thyroid test, to ensure your AF is not caused by a thyroid disorder. Your doctor will also take a health history and ask you questions about how the atrial fibrillation is affecting your quality of life. If you have the type of atrial fib that comes and goes, it may be difficult for your doctor to capture it on an ECG. If that is the case, your doctor may order a whole term monitor or an event recorder for you to wear to see if your AF will be captured on these devices. A Holter is a device that monitors your heart for 24 to 48 hours. An event recorder is like a Holter, but it is worn for two weeks. It also allows you to press a button to record when you are experiencing symptoms. Most patients who are diagnosed with AF will also have an echocardiogram done. This test uses an ultrasound machine to show a picture of your heart size and gives your doctor a lot of information about your heart function, such as the valves, blood flow, and your ejection fraction or your heart muscles pumping ability. Sleep apnea is a risk factor for developing atrial fibrillation. If your doctor thinks you may have sleep apnea, he or she will send you for a sleep study to confirm this. Then you will see a sleep specialist to discuss the results of the study and any possible treatments you will require to manage this. A chest x-ray shows the basic heart and lung structures. Treatment of AF is different from patient to patient. The goal of AF treatment is to improve your symptoms and reduce your risk of stroke. The type of treatment you receive depends on the type of AF you have and your symptoms and how atrial fibrillation is affecting you. There are two types of medications generally used to treat AF, rate control and rhythm control medications. Some people may just need one type or others may require both. Some patients do not need any medications as they don't experience any symptoms with their AF. A rate control medication is to slow your heart to a more normal rate and it helps to also slow irregular heart rhythms. Examples of rate control medications would be beta blockers such as metropolol, calcium channel blockers such as dizhyzem, and cardiac glycosides such as digoxin. They work by reducing the number of impulses that travel from the atria through the AV node to the ventricles. It is important that your heart rate is not too fast for a long time as the heart muscle can become weak. The weakness of the heart muscle can lead to developing heart failure. These types of medications can help prevent this from occurring with you. Rhythm control medications, often referred to as antiarrhythmic drugs, help to restore and maintain a more regular heart rhythm. The most common ones used are amiodarone, flecainide, propafenone, and sotalol. In some patients, their doctor will prescribe what is referred to as a pill in the pocket. This can be a choice for patients who only experience AF once in a while, such as people with paroxysmal AF. When you start to feel symptoms, you take the prescribed medication which can be a rate or rhythm control drug. The idea being that the symptoms will settle down, shorten the AF episode, and prevent you from having to go to the emergency department. One of the most common procedures for treating atrial fibrillation is a cardioversion. Many people have this done in the emergency department if necessary, and it can also be a planned procedure coming to the Heart Institute to have it done as a day procedure. If you have a cardioversion, you will need to be on blood thinners or anticoagulants before the procedure 
and after to prevent blood clot formation. You will be given a medication to help you relax and sleep by a doctor called an anesthesiologist. Once you are asleep, the cardiologist will deliver a small electrical shock to the heart to convert you back into a normal rhythm. Your doctor may also start you on a rhythm control medication to help your heart stay in a normal rhythm after the cardioversion. Often this is only a short-term solution. In most patients, the AF will come back, requiring another cardioversion or another form of treatment. A catheter ablation is a procedure where the electrophysiologist, this is a special type of cardiologist, stops the arrhythmia causing the, the AF by ablating the abnormal cells that produce the arrhythmia. This procedure is done with an energy source, hot or cold, using a catheter inserted into the veins of your groin or neck. If you are scheduled to have an ablation procedure, please make sure you attend our patient education class where you will learn more about the procedure in greater detail. You may need an ablation if other treatments do not work or cause too many side effects. In some people, this is the first type of treatment for their atrial fibrillation. Patients going for an ablation need to be on blood thinners or anticoagulants before and after the procedure. The need for anticoagulation medication after an ablation is determined by your stroke risk. The doctor that is doing your ablation will let you know if taking anticoagulants after the procedure will still be necessary.